Okay folks, we got some work to be doing. Well, I've got some work to be doing, you've got some work to be watching. We, why do I keep saying we? I have finished this desk. So this is how far I've got so far. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I've got to smooth out the edges. What I'm doing that with is a plane. This guy. This is a number four plane that I borrowed from a friend and I've sharpened it up for him. Um, a lot of people think that the, the, the plane is the devil of all tools. Um, but actually, in fact, it's incredibly versatile and it's actually a pretty awesome tool. Once you've gotten it sharp, I think that's the secret to them. They have to be razor, razor sharp, otherwise they're absolute nightmare to use. If you want to know more about planes, go and find um, a guy on YouTube called Paul Sellers. He sort of teaches um, traditional English woodworking and is definitely the best um, kind of, well, traditional woodworker that I think I've seen on YouTube. So go see if you can find him. So what I'm doing with this is I'm going to run the plane along the edges, essentially just trying to take off some of the um, saw marks and um, then I'm going to run them along on an angle like this, just to take the edge off of all of the, the work. Um, I'll probably go down about a millimetre, a millimetre and a half at a four or five degree angle to try and get these nice and smooth. So, let's get started. Right, if you have a bench, frickin' well use it. I could clamp it to this thing, but I can't work out how I'm gonna do it, so. Now, literally, all I'm taking off is tiny little shavings like that. Don't miss them. Alright, I think I've worked out that. By doing the size, it's going to be better for me to actually sand it, which is annoying because I didn't want to have to do that. But for doing the size, because it causes so much friction, I don't have anything to hold it down properly. Um, that's going to be my best option because otherwise the wood just flies about the place and I can't control it properly, which isn't very safe. So I'm just going to concentrate on doing the edges. I'll actually show you what I've done. So if you look along here, I've literally kind of hard to tell but that that piece of laminate on the surface is actually a 45 degree angle don't do this at home kids and if I had a bench I would literally just whack in an angle, but I can't do that here. Let's have a go. So this, I'm going to do my best to do what I can with the plane, but obviously around these edges it's not going to be very easy. Now I'm taking this edge down just a little bit more than I am everything else, just because this is where my wrists are going to be sitting. Look at that. Look at it. One of these days I'll make a proper sanding block. A real fancy one that will stop all my papers from doing this shit. So that's the top done. Um, this is now all of the edges are nice and smooth. There's nothing that's going to catch on anybody. Ah, what did I do with my screwdriver?
Yeah, it's the last little bit. So, now that I've got all of these um, pieces sorted, so, now that I've finished doing that, there's a pile of pieces. And these are all nicely smoothed out and um, nice and neat bevels on all of the corners, all of the edges rather. So next stage is um, to put on the finish. Hmm. Okay, so now that all the um, corners and the edges are all nicely turned down, um, it's time to apply the oil. Um, the oil that I'm using is tongue oil. Um, there's a couple of sort of big reasons why I've actually chosen to go with tongue oil. One being that it's a very natural oil. Um, and it's food safe. So essentially, now the reason why that's important to me is because I actually have very sensitive skin. And if my hands are in contact with this a lot, I um, don't want to be upset by the finish that I put on the piece of wood. Also another reason to go for a tongue oil is because it actually produces a very tough finish. I think it's sort of an unsung hero of um, wood finishes because um, I've never really used it before and I didn't know it had so many good properties. So it produces a very hard sort of surface finish which is resistant to stains, it's resistant to water um, but once it actually um, fully sets. And thirdly is because it's a grain enhancer so it makes your grain pop. Um, I haven't got any idea what it's going to make this uh, actual table look like. Firstly, before I begin, I've made sure that um, I've got a waterproof mat down on the floor because this is carpet and I want my deposit back. And oil is, it's not too difficult to get out of carpets, but it's, it's not something I want to deal with. So I'm, not, I'm going to uh, take the precautions to put this down. Um, Secondly, if you've got a microfiber cloth, it's the best thing for getting tiny particles of sawdust and just dust particles off of your actual workpiece. Um, tongue oil is very, very forgiving when you're, when you're applying it. It's not like varnish. If you trap little, little bits of stuff in there, you can essentially wipe them off uh, because it's going to set into the wood. It's not going to try and set into, well, the dust. But even so, you want a reasonably clean work surface no matter what kind of finish you're putting on. So I always use a microfiber cloth. So I've got this. There's my tongue oil. It's called, kind of got like an ambery kind of colour to it. I'm just going to get it on an old paintbrush and just start applying it. You don't have to worry about getting this stuff on your skin. It does smell a little bit, but it smells like oil. But I can already see that it's pulling it out of the grain of that really, really nice. Again, I'm not the master of all tongue oil. I mean, really, you should follow the grain, but again, it doesn't really matter because it's quite forgiving. So for the edges, I'm just going to um, just neatly go along and try and the edges are because it is end grain, it is going to absorb quite a lot more. So I'm just being quite free with it, really, and letting it suck it up. Now for what I'm doing, I'm just going to aim on one coat for the whole lot of it and then maybe another coat for the top for where it's actually going to be facing a bit of wear and tear. So actually with the plywood that I'm using, doing all of that coat has uh, left me with probably about a third of what I put in there and I only filled it up probably. 50 mil to 100 mil. Well, that's probably massively exaggerating. Okay, I've actually left this on here for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Ideally, you want to leave this on for about half an hour. Um, but I'm a bit pushed for time, so um, you leave it on and then you rub it off with some 
well, an old clean cloth of some description. This is a piece of old t-shirt. And you can give it a good rub down and you can buff it a little bit at the same time. Now, I was harping on earlier about the um, benefits of it, but I didn't really tell you about the drawbacks. Uh, the main drawback with um, this oil, which is also why um, it's not used so much commercially, is because it takes absolutely yonks to dry. It'll take about 24 hours before it sets. And then it will take another probably week till it fully cures. Now this stuff is getting all over my hands. But to me that's not really much of a problem. I haven't really chosen the best time to do this because I'm moving. Hence why all the boxes are everywhere. The colour has completely changed. And it's actually pulling out a really nice grain. Okay guys, so here she is fully assembled. The colour change on it is pretty dramatic. Uh, this oil isn't quite dry yet, it's still leaving a little bit of a uh, residue as you sort of touch it, but it's nothing extreme. Um, it will take about a week to fully absorb and cure. As you can see, I've replaced all the screws with some much, much fancier ones. These are brass round-headed woodworking screws um, using cup washers, which are also in brass. Um, but all in all, it looks a lot nicer. As you can see, the grain has been pulled straight out of this wood. And it's actually made it look so much better. Um, I especially like all of the detail that's pulled out of the um, edges of the wood. And you can see all the sort of like, well, laminations kind of all packed in together. And in some places you get quite cool little um, sort of patterns. With all the edges nice and smooth as well, it's um, produced quite a cool looking, cool looking table, I think. It's definitely a bit um, quite original. Now oh, I might throw out a Q&A um, video about the table. Um, just to answer any questions you guys have, um, I've been asked a couple of times for um, a specific diagram um, with all my measurements and all that kind of stuff, but as you saw through the actual uh, building process, I didn't really make any. So all of my edges and my curves are all um, based on an old tin that I have. So. That'd be difficult. I mean, I can go around it and measure it all and actually make some sort of uh, blueprint or something that you can sort of follow. But then again, that is kind of the beauty of it is that it is kind of just um, random bits and pieces. My next major idea is to turn this old, disgusting, yellowing disgrace of an iPod dock into a nice, modern, sleek looking um, wireless Bluetooth speaker. Reusing all the old parts, or as much of it as I can sort of get out of it, putting it in a new body and modernising it with a bit of Bluetooth, so no wires necessary. Now whether I make it battery powered or mains powered, um, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I've got to kind of think about how I want to use it. So if you want to see how I do that, and reuse some old parts and bits and pieces, you'll have to subscribe, I'm afraid, and stay tuned. Now, I'm sorry if I don't produce anything over the next couple of weeks. Um, as I kind of suggested, I am moving, so I won't be in the position to make anything straight away, but I'll get right back on it as soon as I can. So, I will see you in the next video. Like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll answer any questions in there I can, when I can, but anyway. See ya.